Well, good afternoon and welcome everyone. As many of you know, the vehicle content featured on the channel thus far has usually revolved around the years of 2011 all the way up into today's generation in 2014 and 15. However, in the past, we have been known to find vehicles that don't specifically follow that set of criteria. Well, again, we have found another prime example of that exact statement in the form of this absolutely immaculate and ultra rare 2009 Pontiac Solstice GXP Coupe. Now our particular vehicle today is one of the many pre-owned examples that you'll find here at Humble Hyundai out here in North Houston, Texas. And now with all of that being said, this is going to be a complete and in-depth review of the Solstice GXP. And this does entail a complete startup and overview of the engine, as well as a good look at many of the unique and notable styling cues and multiple features, technologies, and creature comforts that now make this one of the most collectible vehicles ever to come out of General Motors assembly plants. And so, bearing all that new information in mind, let's go ahead and climb aboard and we'll check it out. To begin with, this particular Solstice GXP Coupe is wearing the cool or liquid silver metallic exterior. And accenting the brightness of this beautiful silver exterior, our particular vehicle's interior has been fully upholstered in the standard black leather with red color contrast stitching on the steering wheel, embroidery on the seats, and also on the floor mats. and instantly that beautiful turbocharged four-cylinder power plant bursts into life. The steering in the Solstice GXP is typical of what you'd expect of a sports car. It's very stiff, but provides plenty of feedback to pretty much put the driver in the best connection with the front wheels and also with the road. It's very much a point and shoot steering system. You pretty much turn the steering wheel and wherever you leave it is pretty much where it stays. Very much like this car's much bigger muscle car brethren, the Corvette. It's got a beautiful three-spoke leather trim steering wheel with the Pontiac Arrowhead right front and center and also a sort of vinyl-like material for the airbag cover. <laughs> now there were two transmissions available for the Solstice GXP, the first of which is what we have here, the standard five-speed manual transmission. Nice and crisp throws, not too notchy. All the way over to the right and down for reverse. Or you also had the available electronically controlled five or six speed automatic transmission with low gear selection and electronic overdrive. Got this nice big thick grip here for your emergency brake, nice and thick, and also with a beautiful, beautiful bit of painted silver here on the topmost portion of the handle. In natural formation, only the driver's side window is automatic in both directions. Now one of the things that made the Solstice very unique is its overall design, taking a little bit of inspiration from again the older brethren, the Corvette, featuring a full clamshell hood that pretty much reveals the entire front end of the vehicle. And once you open up that big clamshell hood, you'll find a two liter dual overhead cam, 16 valve, turbocharged and intercooled spark ignition direct fuel injected inline four cylinder. In one form or another, this is basically the same motor that's in the Chevrolet Cobalt SS and also in this car's brethren, the Saturn Sky Redline. Overall, it produces a healthy 260 horsepower and 260 pound-feet of torque. 
This is enough to give this featherweight coupe a zero to 60 time of five and a half seconds at a top speed approaching 150 miles an hour. Even so, despite the turbocharged power plant and manual transmission, it is actually quite fuel efficient, scoring an average of 19 miles per gallon city and 28 miles per gallon on the interstate highway on recommended premium unleaded gasoline as this is a turbocharged power plant. Truly one of the last great turbo four bangers before Pontiac went upside down. And now let's see about a few revs of that turbocharged four banger and see what kind of soundtrack she produces. got a beautiful purr to it, especially at low revs. Beautiful little backfire as well. Absolutely stunning sound from that power plant. And with all that in mind, let's go ahead and turn on the headlights. You do have the option of them being automatic, as well as turn on the fog lights and the hazard lights as usual. And now let's take this opportunity to explore the exterior of the Solstice GXP. Now anyone who is a General Motors fanatic knows that Pontiac no longer exists. It went bust in about 2010 when General Motors decided to sell the brand in favor of keeping some of its more primary brand names. However, Pontiac was known for creating some of the most exciting and also some of the most beautiful vehicles on the market inspired from various areas of the world. The Solstice GXP was of course one of the most driver focused cars of all time. With a two seater layout and definitely one of the most advanced suspension and turbocharged power plants of its time period. Now what you're looking at here is perhaps the rarest version of the Solstice overall. The GXP came in both coupe and convertible versions, however only 1,266 Solstice GXP coupes were ever made. Now this Solstice GXP here is riding on the standard set of polished 18 inch chrome plated aluminum alloy wheels mounted on Goodyear Eagle F1 tires, measuring 245-45 all the way around. Now to sort of enjoy the wind in the hair experience that the Solstice convertible offered, the coupe also comes with a standard target top, releasable by three levers inside which you'll see here in a moment. Chrome plated door handles. Got a beautiful throaty burble from those big dual outlet exhaust. Now although the trunk here looks like one big hatch, as you can see the big pieces running around the sides here, the trunk is actually only this little piece of glass right here. So it does kind of complicate things just a slight bit if you're looking to put a little bit bigger pieces of luggage into your vehicle. But that being said, it still does provide quite a bit of rear uh, space. And you'll see that here at its appropriate time. Got a 
Beautiful little ducktail spoiler coming off the rear end of the vehicle. Got a nice little niche to help you open up your fuel filler cap if you can't find it at night. Just an absolutely stunning example of a pure sporty driving experience. Rear wheel drive, turbocharged four cylinder power, and all the collectability value in the world. So sad that the Arrowhead had to go bottom up. They really were starting to create some of the best cars in the world. But now with all the exterior being seen of the Solstice GXP, let's go ahead and take a look at the high performance interior. As I stated previously, this car has been specially lined in a black leather interior. Very big bucket seats for both the seats. Also, you can see the red color contrast stitching running along the edges of the seats, along with the red embroidery in the uppermost portion of the headrest. Your seat's height and forward-backward adjustment is also located right here in the front. Small little latch all the way down here. Just push up to raise the seat up and also to raise the seat down. We've also got these turned aluminum sill plates. And even though this is a rather basic sports car, the vehicle does come with some powered amenities, including power door locks, your power mirrors, your automatic one-touch driver and passenger window, or excuse me, just driver's window, and it's automatic down only. I know I said it was automatic up-down, but it's only automatic down. Once you step inside the interior of the Solstice GXP, it's actually quite basic. And also, not to mention the first thing you notice is if you're a taller person like me, it is a little bit confined to actually get in. You do have to duck your head quite a bit because you can see how big the window actually is for this car. And I'm about six foot one and you do really have to duck your head in order to actually step into the vehicle itself. Now the interior of the Solstice GXP is pretty much typical GM. All the materials are actually quite hard touch, especially like the dashboard here, your painted plastic piece, which is also paint matched to the exterior of the vehicle in some cases. Um, it's actually, you can see it's just plasticky, but it's not cheap plastic. It doesn't feel sort of half built if you get my drift. Also, if you can see real quick, being that the automatic lights are still on, the gauges have turned this sort of luminescent red, which is a very typical Pontiac type, type thing to do. Now the gauge cluster in this car is very focused. You have three separate gauges here. You have your fuel gauge right in the middle, your speedometer on the left, and your tachometer on the right with trip meter and odometer. One of the great things about this car is that it is very low mileage. You can see it only has 13,081 miles. And for a car that's essentially four years old already, that's extremely low mileage. And again, a very big plus when it comes to collectability. Now you do get a lot of the standard features that you would expect in a small sports car. You have a single zone air conditioning system for both the driver and passenger. Air conditioning recycling, just push the fan speed button in the middle to introduce your um, air conditioning recycling. Maximum AC and temperature control on the left and all of your different climbing zones including front and rear defrost over here on the right hand side. Now the stereo on the Solstice is actually very basic but it does actually make a pretty good sound.
Then you've got your equality button or equalizer button over here. You can do it manually, or you have all of your different pre-selected options down here. Your different favorite buttons, your single stack CD player right here, audio controls, you just push the tune button over here on the right, and it introduces your basic uh, bass, mid-range, treble, back, and all that stuff. And don't worry about the flickering of the screen. That's actually just a trick of the camera. In real life, it's actually quite still and actually very nice because it's easily legible. You've got your power button here in the center, uh, reverse and forward, also your seek track buttons and different band buttons as well. And you've also got room for your CD and also your auxiliary import in the lower right hand side of your radio station. Also, one single 12 volt outlet right here next to the gear shifter. Now as far as the gear shifter itself, it's all wrapped in leather with a little bit of sort of a grain, a very large grain, sort of vinyl-like material here for the actual boot itself. However, it is all stitched together with a nice little bit of red color coordinated stitching, also with a nice chrome ring around it. Again, it's actually very nice to throw, and it's not a sort of snick snick feel because it does feel a bit notchy, but once you throw it around, it actually is, you know, pretty easy to knock back gears every once in a while. And as I said before, also the e-brake handle is nice and thick, you can grab, on, grab onto it with a nice bit of force, and also it's got that nice little piece of painted silver. All here in the center console, it is padded, it does have a little bit of soft touch give to it, and you also have a very small little storage compartment underneath a very nice little Pontiac arrowhead here. Just push the button, and it falls right open, and you've got about enough room for maybe like a bag or two, like a little snack bag or something. Again, this car is not meant to be like a huge long distance traveler. This is meant to be a sports car, something you throw around the track and drive like a hooligan. You also have a nice little vanity mirror with no lights. Now to release the target top on this vehicle, there's three separate levers. You pull this one here, folds out, do the same with the other side, and then simply release the latch right here and it will automatically release the whole target top to which it can actually be stored directly in the trunk. Overall, the Solstice GXP is a very collectible and very desirable automobile. Even with very basic functions such as all of your radio control buttons and whatnot here on the steering wheel, and not very much in the way of luxurious options, you still are getting a lot for your money when it comes to finding one of these cars. Not to mention, if you're a, if you're a collector and you want something rare, and you want something with a high bit of collector value but don't want to pay much money, take a look at the Solstice GXP. It definitely should be on the list of a lot of collectors out there. But with all that being said, viewers, let's go ahead and turn off the engine. Just simple as that. You can hear the doors automatically unlock once the vehicle is turned off. And with that being done, let's go ahead and check out the rest of the Solstice GXP. Now, as I said, trunk space is not a priority when it comes to buying this vehicle. As you can see, when you open the trunk, it's not exactly what you'd call commodious. You can see you do have a small little storage area here for probably about, I don't know, a couple of suitcases worth. You can also lift up this. You've got a small little storage compartment down below. And it'll just slot right back into place. And then also you've got your standard storage area with a cargo net and also nice little cup holders back here for perhaps, I don't know, putting your drink back there when you can't fit it up front. Now, despite being such a basic sports car, it does have a bit of quality. Just listen when you close the door. Just a nice, soft, authoritative thunk. Now as far as safety goes, you have a driver and passenger airbag and a variety of other airbags stored throughout things like the seats and also possibly here in the side curtain, although of which I cannot actually confirm that at the moment. Now taking a seat in the passenger side, 
Again, you do have to duck your head quite a bit just to step into the vehicle in the first place. But once you sit inside, it's actually not too cramped. I mean, like I said, I'm about 6'1", and if I adjust the seat as far back as it'll go, which is in its position right now, I do still have a good bit of leg room. I can actually stretch out quite a good bit. I can still even open the glove box, which is damped very slightly, and it's not lined with felt, typical in General Motors fashion. It's just plastic. But again, overall, the Solstice GXP is definitely a must-have on the list of collectors who are looking for a lot of car for not a lot of money. Definitely rare to even see one of these in existence anymore. Most of them have already been bought and the owners are, are keeping them due to the collectability value. Unbelievable. So viewers, I hope you've enjoyed this rather rare look at a 2009 Pontiac Solstice GXP Coupe. If you've enjoyed this review and want to take a better look at this vehicle, please feel free to contact Umble Hyundai at umblehyundai.com or come visit them in their inventory here off of Interstate 59 in Umble, Texas. Till then viewers, I hope you had a great time and take care until next time. See you later everyone.